Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the exciting Vaughn Manor, where we're looking ahead to adventure. So, Roger and I are looking ahead to adventure, and basically this is just a video full of random stuff. Some random things I'm going to be talking about here in this video. One of the things I'm going to be talking about is my big Edgar Rice Burroughs deep dive that begins next year in January. But before we get to that, I've got a couple other things to talk about. The first thing is the 100 book challenge that I'm doing. Now, since I put out my video where I was saying how I'm going to be doing the 100 book challenge again, the one that was created by Criminali last time, Criminali has come out with a video saying how he is reviving this channel, this challenge for himself and some others. Now, he's changed up this time. He's giving it tears. So if you read like, the basically the whole thing, it's, a, it's called the Read What You Own Challenge. So the idea is you read a certain amount of books that you own before you will buy any new ones. And there are different tiers. If you read 25 books, it's bronze, and if you read 50, it's silver, and 75, it's gold. I'm thinking this is the way it goes. And then if you read 100, it's platinum. Now, I'm going for platinum. Even though I didn't even make 10 last year, I did really badly last year, which is one of the reasons I'm doing it this year. So, yeah, he's doing it himself, Criminali is. Now, he will be done by, like, next month. Criminali reads fast. And another bibliophile reads, same thing. He just, he just reads like crazy. That's, that's, basically, that's, the, that's his job, another bibliophile reads. His job is to sit around and read and occasionally do other things. But me, I don't have that much time. So, and I don't read as fast as Criminali, that's for sure. So it's going to take me a little longer to read my 100 books. Some people don't believe I can do it which is perfectly reasonable considering my performance last year. But this year, I'm keeping a close eye on you, buddy. I'm keeping a close eye on Roger. And to make things even more effective, the lady of the manor is involved now, and she's keeping a close eye on me. So she'll be keeping an eye on me while I'm keeping an eye on him. So yeah, I think I just might make the 100 book challenge this year, since I've got somebody watching but that's the first thing now one thing i never talked about when i did my video the other day about the 100 book challenge is what is a book what counts as a book now every one of us who does this challenge we're going to make up our own ideas about this we're going to decide for ourselves each one of us who does this what counts as a book because it can be confusing, you know? Is it a book that was published as a book, but later on it's published in an omnibus volume? Then is it one book or is it part of several that are one book? It's confusing, it can be confusing. To make things less confusing, and because I've got a ton of physical books lying around, I am not going to be counting any eBooks and I'm not going to be counting any audiobooks. I mean, I, I've had no success with those anyway. So I'm not counting audiobooks. I'm not counting ebooks. If other people want to, fine. You know, that, that's fine. But this is for me personally. I'm not going to be counting those. I'm only going to be doing this challenge with physical books because I've got a lot of physical books. But again, this can make it confusing. As an example, let's dig into this giant pile of Edgar Rice Burroughs I've got sitting here and pull out this. This is the Dover edition of The Land That Time Forgot and The Moon Maid. So is this one book or is it two books? Oh, wait! The Land That Time Forgot was previously published in paperback in three different volumes. And The Moon Maid was published in two different volumes in paperback. So is this one book? Is it two books or is it five books? You see what I mean about confusing? Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'm only dealing with physical books and I'm gonna go by the volume. 
This is one book. If I were to read this, no matter how many books are packed in here, or how many stories or novels or what, this is going to count as a book. This is a book. This is one book. That goes the same for everything else. Like this, Earth Abides, one book. Well, that would be one book anyway. But if I were to read an omnibus volume of something, like if I were to read this John Carter of Mars edition, which I'm not, that's five, that's five novels in one book. It would be one book because it's in one volume, you know. That just makes it easier. So I'll be reading a lot of single volume books, obviously. So that's that. Now to move on to other things. And one thing I wanted to move on to is there's a new book out from Leslie S. Klinger, the fellow who annotated all of these books up here. He did the new annotated Frankenstein, the new annotated Dracula, new annotated H.P. Lovecraft in two volumes, and he did American Gods, and he did the new annotated Sherlock Holmes. So he's annotated a lot of volumes, and they're all fantastic. They're all beautiful books with gorgeous illustrations and all kinds of extra stuff in them. They're magnificent. He's come out with a new volume, Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the new annotated Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. So this is a brand new volume from Leslie S. Klinger, and it, it has the full has the full workup that he did on all the other books, although this one is much, much shorter because it's, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is... Well, it's not even a full novel. It's basically a long short story. Novelette, whatever you want to call it. It's short. It's, you know, not even 100 pages, I don't think. So you've got this, a short little book, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the new annotated version of it, and it's wonderful. Uh, it's just as beautiful on the inside as the other volumes. Uh, has an introduction uh, by Joe Hill. Joe Hill does the introduction. Horror writer Joe Hill does the introduction. And Leslie Klinger does his own lengthy forward where he talks about Robert Louis Stevenson, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, its effect on Victorian society, and uh, how it was adapted into films. And so it's this really cool, really involved forward there. Of course, you could see some of the wonderful is illustrations in this volume. Uh, there are a lot of them. It's... It's really cool. Uh, one, one of the cool things about these annotated editions is there's just so many, so many cool illustrations, so much cool information. And then when you get to the story, I mean, it just goes on and on. It's just awesome. And then when you get to the story itself, you have the text there and you have a lot of annotations. Uh, Leslie Klinger goes all out when he annotates an edition. He gives you about all the information you could possibly need. And you actually learn quite a bit about Victorian society. When you go through these volumes just from the notes, you learn all kinds of interesting stuff that you would never otherwise know. Uh, I found that to be the case uh, when I've read the previous new annotated editions. And this one seems to be uh, just as great as the other volumes. So I wanted to let you know about this volume since it just came out. Uh, it's got some extra information on the back. What do we have here? We've got the notebook draft. And I think we've got the printer's text. Yeah, we've got the printer's copy in the back too. So all kinds of extra goodies when you get this. So yeah, Leslie S. Klinger does it again. So this was pretty cool. Want to let you guys know about that. That was awesome. And now looking ahead to the future... I did want to talk about the big project for next year. So last year I made a mistake and I made all these plans about all the gazillion books I was going to read, which I didn't. I read some of them, but most of them I didn't. So I'm not going to make those kinds of plans for next year. Uh, if, I, if you see me making those kinds of plans, uh, as far as all the gazillion science fiction books I'm going to read and horror and stuff like that, just don't pay any attention. Uh, one thing I am going to do is I am going to continue reading Stephen King. Uh, next month, I'm going to get back on reading 
every book by Stephen King. And I'll continue that off and on next year. And I'm going to be doing some reading events next year, but probably only four of them. Uh, Horror Mayhem will be the first one in May that I'll do. And then, of course, June on the Range. My own reading event devoted to Western fiction. I'm going to be doing that. That's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. Uh, I miss Westerns. I need to read some of those. And uh, there's Dick Timber in December, which I assume is going to be happening again. And New World's November, which is what I'm doing now. I, any excuse to read science fiction. But in the beginning of the year, I'm going to be doing a deep dive into Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is a book about Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs, the man who created Tarzan. This is a gigantic book all about Edgar Rice Burroughs. There's the man himself, hard at work in this very shiny book, <laughs> shiny photograph. So I'm going to be reading this uh, book. It's an autobiography, but it's also about the work itself, that, you know, also about his work. So it's just this really cool, really big book about Edgar Rice Burroughs. There's Edgar Rice Burroughs there. Looking all adventurous. So I'm going to be reading this, and then I'm going to be reading every book by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs, the creator of Tarzan and John Carter of Mars. All the other books are going to be put on hold while I read every one of these, one after the other after the other. It's a deep dive, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be reading them mostly in the order of composition, but sometimes that's kind of impossible. So I'm going to come up with the order I'm going to be reading them in. It's mostly going to be in the order of composition, like I said, but sometimes not. It'll make sense, sort of, as I go through it. The first book I'll be reading, of course, is the first book he wrote, which is A Princess of Mars. This one right there, I've read this many, many times before, but most of Edgar Rice Burroughs' books, I haven't read for years and years. Uh, like Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, that's a Tarzan novel I haven't read in years. Uh, so that'll be fun to get to. The Girl from Hollywood? Certainly haven't read that for a while. And even some of the Mars books, like Synthetic Men of Mars. I haven't read this since I was, what? I don't even remember the last time I read this. So it's been a while. And so I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be reading every single Edgar Rice Burroughs book, one after the other. I'm going to be talking about them. It'll be fun. And so that's what I'm going to be doing with, in the beginning of the year. And I'm going to try to knock all those out before May. Uh, we'll see if I can do it. Those are a lot of books, but Edgar Rice Burroughs did not write long books. He tended to write shorter books, and they tend to be really fast-paced. Not particularly mentally challenging, if you know what I mean, but a lot of fun, and yeah, it'll be fun. So that's my big plans for next year. Edgar Rice Burroughs Deep Dive. And thinking ahead to the future, I was thinking about what other kinds of deep dive, what other kind of deep dive uh, readings can I do of authors? Who should I who should I read next? Every book by in the order of composition. There are a lot of writers out there that I can think of. Right now, probably at the top of my list is probably H. Ryder Haggard. He's up there. Um, I toy with H.G. Uh, Wells, but not all of his stuff. <laughs> Am I going to want to read every book by again? I haven't read all of his books. So it's, it's a question. I have to think about what other author I'll be reading every book by in a deep dive in the future. But before I make any of those plans, Edgar Rice Burroughs. That will be fun. So yeah. Just some thoughts for the future in random nonsense. I'll shut up there. I'll shut up now. I'll shut up now and let you go on your merry way. And I will catch you next time.